Hi everyone, hope you're well and welcome back to the Uncollapsible Project. Uh, on the last video we've tested the, uh, the first prototype of flat line tension. So that worked pretty well on the wing and the way it works is there's a little Arduino inside there and uh, with a load sensor if you hang a kilo off of here this will measure a kilo and the computer will know what's going on. So this tension is getting monitored many times a second. And that got me thinking that if that's if that knows what tension is now and it knows what tension was on the last sample then perhaps you can do some kind of collapse alarm just by adding a little buzzer to uh, to the system and doing some math so uh, I think the first thing is going to be how to implement this thing so I think the first thing to figure out is going to be what in computer terms what is a collapse uh, and I think the, the most obvious way to think about it is if there is a tension between the pilot and the wing uh, and the wing folds then that, ten that line has gone slack so it's gone from whatever it was nominal to zero uh, and to go from something say 10 to go from 10 to zero you have to go through all the steps in between it can be very fast but it will definitely go through all the all the numbers in between 10 and 0. So let's put this on a graph and see how that might work. So when we're out ground handling or flying this might be what we see. Here we have the tension and this is time or the number of samples that the computer is taking and uh, you know it might be roughly uh, around the nominal value. It might go up and down a little bit but uh, it, it's roughly the tension that that line should be. And then at some point we might have a deflation or a collapse event. So the tension goes from that nominal value, let's say 10, to 0. And then obviously if it inflates it will go, it'll shoot back up. So this area here is the area that we're interested in. And especially this area here where we want to predict if this is going to happen or not. So if we zoom into that area, it might be something like this where we have discrete points uh, in time. And, uh, and we can compare one point to the previous point. So really what we can do is the derivative or the, we can call it the tension speed, which is basically the slope of this, of, this, of this line. So the steeper it is, the higher the number, and the shallower it is, the, the, the smaller the number. Uh, and really it's just one number minus the other because we're dividing by one, for instance. Or if we wanted to do this one minus this one, we'd divide it by four or five, whatever the difference is. Difference in tension divided by the difference in time or samples. So I'm going to try to implement this derivative method to detect collapses on the Arduino, uh, attach a buzzer to it, basically feed the derivative number so the higher it is the higher pitch the buzzer will sound and uh, it should work. So before going into the Arduino code I thought it would be a good idea to look at the data from the previous test and plot it uh, and that's what you can see here. So the red is the tension on the A line, the blue is the brake line which we're not really considering for this and the yellow and the green are different methods of calculating if a collapse is about to happen or not. From messing around with these numbers I realized that not only you have to do the derivative uh, which is basically the the tension now minus the previous tension but also it's quite useful to have a bar that if the tension speed, that derivative, if the tension speed is not high enough so that the buzzer doesn't sound otherwise um, the threshold will be too low so it's kind of like a bar that it has to be above the bar for it to sound uh, but also a scale factor so we can easily uh, scale it up or down and um, so that's what I'm going to put into the code. So I've just added a simple buzzer and connected it. So I think we're ready to test. Actually we need to turn this on first. Just going to wait a second for it to initialize and calibrate the scale. So 
just like regular scales, you can't just go straight into it. You have to wait until it. Right, so it's all working. So I'm going to put some weight in now. You can already hear that something's happening. So this sensor is seeing three kilos of, or around three kilos of weight now. So because I've set it up in a way where it only considers negative uh, tension speeds, if I put more weight on it, nothing happens. But if I release it, so if I try to take out those three kilos, I'm, I'm only, I'm only taking off maybe half, or not even half. I mean, if I take everything off, but it, it's very sensitive. And if you hear the tone, I'm doing it quite slowly. So it's kind of like a low hertz, deep uh, tone. But if I'm faster, it's a lot higher pitch because it's higher hertz because the derivative, it's a, the, the tension speed is a higher number. So, it's pretty cool. I think, I think it works. The buzzer is installed and that worked out fine, just a little bit of glue. And I've installed the sensor on one of the lines as well. Uh, the way I did it was I went for the second A, so like A2, so not the central A, not the wingtip A, kind of the one in the middle, because when you collapse it, that should still see a fair amount of tension, not so much like the wingtip, but when you collapse it like a 30% or 40%, that should very much go to zero, and like maybe the center ones won't fully collapse on a normal asymmetric. When was the last time you had to write some code on the beach whilst wearing a helmet. I'm gonna try to move uh, upwind. I think we've picked a, a very windy day or a very big wing for this test, look. I'm <laughs> just flying without even moving. So it's the one on this side. It's uh, way, 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 way too strong. I think we'll need to test this another day. What are you doing? Failing miserably. Last time it was too windy. Now it's way too light. <laughs> Since the wind is quite light, one thing we can actually do, just get it up and then pull enough on the A's that it will go to the top and overshoot and then do that dreaded thing that no pilot wants to do which is put no input and let it frontal and we'll see what sounds we get out of this thing. So this is where the sound comes from. So we'll try and capture the sound, see how we go. This is really weird knowing that it's going to overfly me and I'm going to let it do it. It's probably going to get, be a mess and I'm going to get full of lines everywhere. Science for science! Here it goes. Ah, kind of stop. Let me try that again. Okay. Ah! Ah! I really have to catch it. It's so scary. It did some bloops, but I think, but I think the drop in tension is actually quite gradual. So I don't think that that's very good. I think one of the issues from this test and the last test is that it almost 
beeps too often so that obviously it beeps when you're about to have a collapse but it beeps when maybe you wouldn't um, so I might need to refine the code and as this test has shown as well if the drop in tension is too gradual it doesn't beep too much uh, so we might need a factor in that is how much lower is the current tension compared to the nominal so it might have to have a hard value so if it's 50% or less tension and dropping then be more alarm so think back to the drawing board Okay, so it's a little bit more windy today and almost a month's gone past and I've done some alterations to the code. The way it works now is it takes an X amount of samples, let's say 50 samples or the last second of tensions and calculates what the average is and if the tension now is below half of what the average is, then it beeps. And instead of beeping in tones, depending on how far below or not that far below it is it's just a single tone so it makes it easier to understand what's going on rather than just going and it's being very confusing so so in practical terms it's a lot simpler less clever than what it was before but hopefully easier to use so let's try it once it's ready and recording I should make it go beep beep shouldn't I yes need to change right let's try it out so it now looks even worse than it did before because one of these uh, one of these lines on the sensor was cut so that sensor didn't work and we had to drive all the way back home anyway this whole thing is turning into an absolute nightmare so hopefully this thing will be working now sounds like it and we can finally try it and this will for sure be the last attempt for now, so... It doesn't beep. Okay, so now it's not sensitive enough. So, as you can probably tell, this is not going well. It's now started to rain. This is our fifth or sixth time out. It was working perfectly fine at home. It's not working now. I've done too much coding at the beach and I've, yeah, I think I'm done for now. I'll come back to it, but for now, let's say it kind of works, but not really. Um, even if it did work really well, I know a lot of you are thinking, you know, is that sim something you really want to fly with and is it reliable and complexity? This is just a, it's just an idea, it's just something fun to try, well, it's supposed to be fun to try. Uh, it's not really something that I think is going to go into every paraglider in the future. Uh, not in this current state anyway, so take it with a pinch of salt, it's just a bit of fun exploring. Uh, and as always, I want to thank all of these explorers that uh, support our channel. Uh, thank you very much for your support with crazy ideas like this that many times don't go to plan. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. When was the last time you had to connect your paraglider to a computer to understand why the hell it's not working? <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs>